what are we up to today? Well, I'm playing with fish. More specifically, the little live pets fish that uh, that swim. Now, this one, I think, has flat batteries. This was going to be my demo to show you how these things work. But normally, when you put it in water, these two carbon conductors detect that the water's there. And it starts flapping its tail here intermittently with a little mechanism. Now, this one, my apprentice is absolutely obsessed with these things. Now, this was one she fell in love with, but uh, then we had to get a, a friend. Of course, we got the Princess One. Now, Princess One recently got full of water. You can see some of the corrosion there. Um, I've had this open ahead of time, obviously, and I've begun cleaning up the terminals. Now, this wasn't a quick fix, so um, I'm going to have to go to some good lengths to actually repair this, including actually removing this board and checking the underside and all the rest. We have a bunch of fresh new batteries. I've got a big box of LR44 batteries here, a whole heap of them. Um, and we'll see if we can breathe some life back into it because she's kind of devastated at the moment. Anyway, um, let's go over some of the, uh, the ways these work. So we have here a little foam buoyancy aid in the front. Oh, we're off camera here. This is our foam buoyancy aid. And over the back here, we have a ballast weight in the rear. Um, fairly carefully balanced and these float quite level. I'm actually impressed at the, uh, the quality in that regard. Now we have in the back here the mechanism to drive the tail, which you can see here is slightly water affected. So I'll give that some PTFE dry lube soon. Um, and that's actually not a bad gearbox there. You can see here if we were to manually rotate this or push it along a bit, we can actually move that mechanism up and down. So um, yeah, we want to try and find out how we can do this. Now these rubber pads or carbonized rubber pads in here are not actually connected um, by any sort of uh, mechanical or solder means. They just or they are connected mechanically, but they're, they're just pressed up against the edge of the board here. I have tried to lift this board up, but I think the battery terminals here are what's holding it in. When I got to this guy, and we'll come up a little closer here, these two terminals here were actually quite badly corroded. Um, so I'm wondering if there's still some corrosion hiding on the other side of the board. Um, it's obviously been full of water for quite some time. But, uh, you know, trust my apprentice to push anything to its limits. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get the soldering iron out and try and remove these two, uh, so these two terminals here and lift this whole unit off. I might even, uh, make record of the position of these wires and, and remove them as well, just to make life a little easier. So let's get the soldering iron warmed up. So I've had to swing you guys around to the side here to get a better angle. We're gonna turn on some extraction fans, which I still haven't managed to quieten down yet. And um, I have a pre-tinned iron here, and I've chosen the wrong angle again. You can't see what I'm doing through my hand. So we're gonna lift these guys off gently and pop you off and you off. All right, now I'm gonna to have to use a manual desoldering tool if I can find it. I have one around here somewhere. Let's cut to when I found it. Now at when I found it, so uh, I've got my desoldering tool here that's probably seen better days. Now, let's see if I can get this off. I need to actually get myself a proper desoldering gun one day. So, so I can get this off here. I don't want to have to solder wick this because I'll risk moving those surface mounts. I've got a bit off it. There we go. A little uncoordinated today. That's why my soldering iron's shaky. That one needs a little tiny bit of flux from some flux core solder on it. Let's see if we can get you out. That one went well. I might have a second shot at this one. And I know I've got a sniffly snuffly nose in the background. I'm sorry guys, I'm going in to get a COVID test later today. So I'm doing this stuff in isolation while we wait. Now can we break these terminals off a bit? Yep, we can. 
I don't want to shave off any components here, but yep, that one's broken away nicely. So, we might be able to lift this board out now. Just, this one needs a little bit of help here. Let's um, do this lockpick style. Oh, there we go. Well, so straight away I can see some more corrosion and it's a capacitor on the bottom. That makes sense. So, we might have to clean this up and see if we can replace that capacitor. Other than that, the board doesn't look too bad. I've cleaned up worse than that before. But uh, let's get this laid out um, and set down. And it uh, looks like there's a bit of corrosion poking around in the bottom here as well. So, we'll give that a good scrub and a clean up. We'll be back in a minute. Something I've noticed that might be noteworthy here is that um, all along under these carbon pads, there's a little tide line of rusty residue on there, which I think there is always a notification every time I go and video stuff. I think that's actually a Google thing where they go, hey, your phone's active, let's send you notifications. I think it's an attention-getting tactic they use. Anyway, I can see a rusty residue tide line, if you will, along here. It's next to these rubber contacts, and I think that is probably causing it to um, actually think that there's constantly a connection there. So I might have to pull these contacts out and actually clean the whole thing. So I think I have some tweezers that will do that. Um, namely these guys. I'll pull those guys out. Not designed for any great depth, I can tell with these things, but uh, we might be able to increase its waterproofing a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to have to really pull most of this out. Oh, that was a horrible squeaking sound. And that little ballast weight is in nice and firmly, but that's fine. So uh, I think what we'll do, we'll, we'll focus on cleaning this first. Um, I'll find a toothbrush and some cleaning solution. So we have our service sole electronic compound. We're going to spray a bit on the end of this capacitor here. I hope the capacitor is not screwed. It could be. I'll probably lift this up a little bit. This stuff's magic, but it does make the Bluetech go really super sticky. Um, so, I'm gonna, oh, ha! that was the tube off my cleaning agent getting sucked into the fan. Ha! Let's just put that back in off camera here a bit. Turn our fan back out. Now I've got a funny wrinkle in the tube, but that's all right. Oh, there it goes again. Now yeah, threw it across the room. All right, well, um, I guess I'll just leave the tube off it for now. All right, yep, so we've still got a bit of clean to do. One of them legs is quite rusty, so maybe this capacitor has had a bit of a catastrophic failure. I don't know if I've got anything quite that small, but I'll have a look. Anyway, we'll be back in a moment. So I've had a bit of a close look and I can't find the tube off my cleaning spray so I've got spare one somewhere. Anyway, I've been having a look at this capacitor here which appears to be 47 microfarad although it's only a 10 volt. It's a tiny little one. I've probably got some much bigger 47 microfarad caps so I'll have a look and see what I have. I can probably just outright replace that. Other than that, there's not a lot to go wrong in this board. So um, that's good aside from this little contact on the corner here. Come on, focus. I'll put my hand behind it. There we go. Um, that little contact there still needs a scrub. We'll fix that in a minute. Um, the carbonized rubber contacts will need some cleaning. And we're going to work on the base here. Um, I'm going to give it a bit of a soak first. And uh, let it sit and then give it a scrub. And this might go in the sink with some warm water. Or maybe a soak with some vinegar. That might work. And hopefully we'll get that tide line out of here. Yeah. And it's scrubbing up relatively well. Um, but again, it's this side where those contacts go through that I really want to put my efforts into. That's the functional side of things. Yeah, we got to this before it got too bad. So I think that capacitor's just shat itself. 
clean out. I'll give it a tip on the table. Yeah, a bit of rusty stuff. I'll give this a, a wash out and some warm water in a minute. And uh, we'll scrub this other terminal up and we'll be back and look for capacitors. Let's turn this uh, fan off for a moment. Make sure our tiny little components are all in the right spot. <clears throat> now, um, I have a heap of components left over from making Geiger counters. Of that, I believe I have some capacitors. I do have some ceramic caps kicking around somewhere too, but they're using an electro. So, what do we have? 16 volt 220s. Um, that's this one is also a 220. That's 220, so that's pretty much all of them. They're transistors, LEDs, reed switches. Those are, these are super capacitors. Probably not suitable for what we want. Um, let's try another bag and see what we've got. All right, we have another bag. This has mostly got ceramics in here. Um, Oh, these are done with IEC codes, so uh, hmm. I don't know IEC codes off the top of my head very well, so I'm going to have to look it up, but I think 104 is close. I have a bunch of harvested caps here. I've got 470 microfarads, not 47. It would have been close. Um, and I've got these guys, which I think are tantalums or polyesters, I'm not sure. All right. Um, we're going to have to have a bit more of a look. Good old Plan C box. This is assorted bits and pieces that have been left over from a long time. Now we have all sorts of things hiding in here. And I have so much hand sanitizer on my hands, I can't grip anything. Um, they all look like various things. That looks like a 16 volt 47 mic. That might be the job. All right, it's way bigger than what's in there, but I think we can probably find room. If you look at the size comparison here, you can see that, um, yeah, little cap versus this cap. It's still quite a bit bigger, but not so much that we can't fit it in there. All righty. Just doing a little bit of homework to see if this will fit in the recess there is for it under that board. And it probably, will, I don't know, maybe just will fit in there. Ha, huh, it will. It'll be a tight fit, but it will fit. All right. So, now to work out the polarity and to get that in there. Okay, so back to the soldering iron we go. Now, um, do we have polarity marked? So, no, but negative is towards the outside of the board. This one I thought I had some quiet time. There's a King Air B350 flying overhead, um, creating noise, just like I'm going to do with this exhaust fan. So, um, let's see if I can tin my iron a little bit here and drag this component out. There we go. Now I need to find a little bit of solder wick because I actually need it now. And we'll try and clean those holes out. No, we need to stick the board down better first. Hold on a moment. Okay, so the camera is a little bit precariously balanced here for the moment. Um, and I just realised what's going to work really well here is probably a bit of flux. Let's get a little tiny bit of flux on this. There we go. A little bit of flux paste. Compliments of Tinkerman Mick. Right. Put the flux paste in here and see if we can. Haha, nice and clean. Awesome. Okay, now we can. We're going to trim the leads on this a little bit and try and fold this in position. Trim our leads off this capacitor if you can see where we're going. Flush cut those two. And what did I say? Negative to the outside of the board. So we're going to want to come back this way a little bit. What I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put these legs through the board and then position this in and then solder it once everything's actually in there. So let's uh, angle our camera angle up a bit. 
I'll try and position this in before I solder it and commit myself. Um, I think I'll get those legs through the board again. I just want to clean that up a little bit. So I'll get them back through and uh, back in a second. I have to stop and lubricate the vocal cords for a moment. Oh, and our capacitor just fell out. So let's put you back in there. Let's drop you in that hole. I dare say this might have been designed to take a bigger capacitor originally. Uh, okay, I see what I've done wrong here. Well, okay, that capacitor's in anyway. Um, I've got to pull this back out and put those carbon connectors back in, or carbonized rubber connectors. Let me get that out. Where are we? These guys have got to go back in here. And that is going to be easier said than done by the look of this. Oh. Oh, okay, that's gone in okay. I gave these guys a clean up. So they're a little bit grippier than they were when I pulled them out. But they feel very pliable and soft like they were originally. Oh, sorry about the sniffling guys, not much I can do. Alright, so this board has to go up at an angle and sit down into those contacts. Oh, this is going to be easier said than done. Okay, because I think those legs are holding it over too far over. I'm glad I didn't solder this capacitor in immediately because I def most definitely needed to get it in position before soldering it. Now I hope I've got that polarity right. Um, yes, I can just see the negative terminal or negative markings on the capacitor through that slot. Alright, so now point of no return is when we solder it with the soldering iron that's probably entirely too big and we want to stick that down so we avoid um, damaging the water seal along the edge. Let's see how we go here. Yeah, I'm going to need a finer tip soldering line for this one. Um, but we might be lucky. There we go. I've got to wick down a little bit there. We'll just wick it a little bit back off. Hopefully that going melty melt on the plastic is a little bit off. Awesome. I have too much stuff stacked on my desk off camera, so I'm tipping things over. Let's have a look here. Let's get that one in there and then we'll pick up some of the excess again. Um, Oh, I've dropped some a blob of solder halfway along the board there. I will pick that off in a moment. Let's get this off here. Alright. Let's trim our leads off nice and flush in here. Okay, and there we do our battery terminals again. And we hope that this is alive. Alright, here we go. And do the other battery terminal back on again. Alright, and we do our motor wires. Where do they go? Oh, other side. <laughs> I'm smart. So, hopefully that's not too awkward. You know what? Whilst I've got the flux and this out, I'm going to probably clean up those terminals and reapply some solder to them at the same time. So I'm going to do a little bit of fresh solder on these two. Start with our blue wire first, I think, and we'll try and train these wires to go in the right spot. I'm not sure if you can see what's going on here, but we'll swing you around the other side and see what you can see. Okay. And, oh. All right. Let's put some batteries in it. Let's uh, flip this over here and we'll chuck a few batteries in. 
See if we can convince it to wriggle with its skin half peeled off. Alright, that should be in. Usually this does the job. Um, can we give it a slight little extra assist? Aha! It's alive! It should do several little um, convulsions here. Oh, I can't pick anything up off the bench. Let's try again. Aha! That's what it should do. Intermittently it should paddle. Alright, it's alive. Let's get this thing skinned back on and hope it's still waterproof. This was kind of tricky to get apart in the first place because various parts of it were glued. Um, this section, however, I'm pretty sure was just um, sealed by the rubber pressure. But there is that main gasket around the tail there that is going to be really difficult to video while I'm putting back in here. This is always the hardest part of these things is reassembly. Um, Alright, I'm going to have to turn the skin entirely out, inside out, kind of like a rabbit when you're skinning them. Um, and that, I think, should put that gasket loosely in the right position. But we're going to have to coax that um, mechanism around a little bit so we can put that dead centre. And we're going to need to pull that rubber gasket back over that bit which I think may have been the culprit in the first place. Um, yeah, and I'll put some dry lube on this shortly. That's what we need to get in there. All right. I think that's in position. Where's our dry lube? Um, PTFE dry lube. We'll go and should give it a bit more lubrication without damaging the plastic. It also means it goes together nicely. Now, we have a magnet somewhere with some screws on it to put this back together with. Now, these are the long structural screws and I'm going to have to find my little mini screwdriver for that and I'm going to need tweezers to put this one back in. So, we'll put... Oh! I need to get some grippy tweezers. These are about as grippy as my hands right now. Alright, let's find my little screwdrivers. Alrighty, little jeweler's driver to the rescue. Is that gasket in properly? I really hope so, or we could all end up being back here again. Alright, I need a slightly bigger tip on that. Because I'm feeling it jump out of the Phillips head screws. You know what, I personally despise Phillips head screws. They just, just, yeah, I much prefer Robertson. Okay, oh, I just realized I've forgotten to put the screws back in the circuit board in there. But you know what, they might not be strictly necessary because I think the battery terminals will hold it down. Let's um test this. Yeah, I think it's gonna function all right. Um, let's give this a quick test with the skin hanging off it. Yeah, I think it's going to be fine. Alright, let's put the skin back on. See if we can get this in. See, Little Live Pets, not sponsored. Might be nice if somebody sponsors me, but then I couldn't rant about not getting paid and, you know, corporate sponsorships and stuff. Now there's a little knob there that fits into a hole. Now when we first opened this, this whole um, rubber skin around here was actually all sealed uh, or glued along this edge here. So um, I'm not probably going to repeat that. I think I'm just going to work this skin up and rely on the mechanical force of the battery door to hold it shut. These aren't going very much deeper in the bath than a couple of meters. You have to excuse me while I fix my nose. Alright, so we have a battery door somewhere. It's on my desk somewhere. I'll find the battery door and we'll be back. The battery door was behind the camera. Alright, so I'm hoping this is going to provide enough seal 
to uh, keep the water out. But and I noticed along here that rubber gasket on the back might not be in position all that well, but I guess we'll find out. Anyway, we've saved ourselves 30 bucks on another one of these because these things aren't cheap. Alright, let's see if we actually do what we're supposed to do. Oh, well, it did for a little bit. Oh, it actually goes a bit quicker than it used to. It's got some lubrication in the gearbox. Alright, let's see if we can um, trigger this guy. This guy might have flat batteries. Or potentially the same issue. I don't know. We'll have a look. We'll rip this one open and see what we get. So let's pull our batteries out. Right. Now, I don't know if there's any signs of corrosion or water in there, but um, there's certainly none in the battery bay. We can try a brand new set of batteries, I guess. Um, let's test the old ones first. I have a whole hearing aid battery tester somewhere. Let me find that. Blast from the past here, which is my old toolbox from when I used to work doing hearing aid repairs. So let's uh, pull this out and have a look. We've got that battery is apparently okay, but a bit dicky in the contact. This one is okay, and this one's a bit funny on the contact as well. Let's clean my battery tester. I haven't used that in a while. Let's get my battery. Give these terminals a quick little scrub. I love that stuff. Handy for everything. Let's see what we've got. That one looks good. Um, oh, okay, now I've dropped one, and the magnet has cleaned the other one. Yeah, alright, so I think the batteries are a bit intermittent. Let's try a fresh set. Alright, so these things can get expensive to run. I get a discount on these things. Um, I get them for about a buck fifty each. But uh, you can you can get very much cheaper ones. But when you look at the cost of buying the bulk pack that I have to to get the cheaper ones, they're actually not actually that much cheaper. I end up with a heap of batteries I don't need. So that is good. These packets are a nightmare to get open sometimes. But as you can tell, I've done this quite a number of times in the past. Notifications, go away. I'm going to leave that in the video because I don't want to have to recut this bit. Sorry guys, but it's what you get. Because I'm in isolation, somebody else has to go and get my apprentice. So uh, that's what that was about. Alright, let's chuck three new batteries in here and see what we get. Does this one still function? It does. This one was just flat batteries. Alright, cool. I'm going to put the battery cover back on that one, and we've got two new swimming fish. My apprentice will be happy, um, but I think until my test results come back, I think she's going to get a couple of days off school. So, that'll be fun. I think I can put my fingers on those ones. There we go. And we can do this one as well. With the both of them swimming at the same time, can we? There we go. Haha. <laughs> awesome. Her friends work again. I will be popular when she knocks off school. Alright, which is about now. I've just made it in time. So I'll see you all next time. And uh, hopefully there will be something different other than rubber fish to play with.